And your name, sir? My name is Mark. And Greg, you're able to hear me right now? Yes, I can hear you. All right, good morning. Thank you. And this call may be recorded or monitored for quality assurance purposes. And you give me permission to speak with Mark regarding your personal income tax matters? Yes. All right, thank you. You can go ahead, Mark. Yeah, we have, um, he had gotten, of course, as you can see, a demand for a tax return. Correct. And he had sent a letter in asking for evidence to support your arguments or claims that the Constitution apply to him just because he's physically in California. He got a standard form letter back from Royce Larson. Yes, that would be myself. Oh, that's you. That's correct. Oh, I'm sorry, I wrote down. Okay, uh, well, um, it's not actually... Regarding, is this regarding 2014? All tax years. All tax years. But it, it's probably in, in, re, in response to uh, the 2014. Okay, that's, yes, I'm seeing here as well. See, uh, the question was a matter of evidence. Uh, do you have any actual proof that just because he's physically in California that your Constitution applies to him? Well, based on the Revenue and Taxation Code, the California residents would be taxed on all sources of income, minus any exclusion. Yeah, my question is, do you have any actual facts that would prove that just because he's physically in California, your Constitution applies to him? Well, based on the information that we do have, he would have a filing requirement, so that would based on, you know, the constitutionality letter that we sent out that does inform him of our authority to pursue the tax year. And based on the reported wages and California resident, he would have a filing requirement. Okay, let's take and if he chooses not to file, then this also informs him that a filing enforcement would be, uh, be created in place of an actual return, which is estimated based on standard deduction and a single as a filing status. Yes, but my question is, and maybe you get a little specific, what specific facts prove that just because he's physically in California that your Constitution applies to him? Okay. Again, that, I mean, that information would be located on our Revenue and Taxation Code. Now, each specific section regarding that, I mean, that's something that if you want to look up or, you know, get fam become familiar with, I mean, that would be um, in your discretion. But, you know, that's what we're currently following is the Revenue and Taxation Code. Now it's yeah, the I, I tax get law. That. I get that. But you're, you're referencing in your form letter here the Constitution. So... I'm asking you for specific facts that would prove that your constitution applies to Greg just because he's physically in California. What, what kind of proof are you referring to? I'm asking, you're the one who is making the claim that the constitution applies to him because he's physically in California. What proof do you have to support that claim? And what kind of proof are you looking for? I mean, do you have evidence? Do you have specific facts proving that just because he is physically in California, your constitution applies to him? Well, it would apply to him being a California resident, but do I have, you know, facts off, you know, offhand? No, I do not. Is that something that you would request or would like? That's something, if you want to submit that in writing, we can definitely respond to that. He's already responded in writing, and you responded with a form letter. So you're telling right. me on the phone right now, just, I, I think I, you know, I heard you very clear. I just want to make sure. At this uh -huh. time on the phone, you can't provide any specific facts that would prove your Constitution applies to him just because he's physically in California. Again, I would just need to refer you to the Revenue and Taxation Code to look up the information, but do I have that specific information on the hand? No, I do not. Okay. Is it, you see, you're kind of confusing thing. I'm asking you for specific facts to prove your Constitution applies to him because he's physically in California. You, you keep seem, seeming to want to go back. You initially said you, you don't have the proof, but then you said something about the Revenue and Taxation Code. Are you actually trying to convince us? Well, wait, let me finish. Are you actually trying to convince me that... The facts proving your constitution apply to him is something in the revenue and taxation code? 
it depends if you're referring to the California Constitution or the Revenue and Taxation Code sections. No, I'm asking you for specific evidence, facts, proof that just because he's physically in California, your Constitution applies to him. And you keep going back to the Revenue and Taxation Code. So either you're not understanding I'm asking you a question of fact, and you keep wanting to answer with a, an issue of law, or your position actually is, and it's astounding, that you're trying to convince me that you, that the evidence proving your Constitution applies to him is your Revenue and Taxation Code. I mean, which one is it? Well, the information that you're referring to that I'm looking for regarding the California Constitution obviously is regarding the California Constitution. Now, specific proof that you're looking for, I don't have the information off, off, offhand. So, again, if you would, would like the specific facts or proof, then if you can submit that in writing, we can definitely have a chance to, to look into that and respond to that in writing. Okay, but, but, when, but I will do that, but I'm telling you that a responsive answer to specific facts proving your Constitution applies to him because he's physically in California is not going to be a legal citation. Yeah, I mean, you do understand the difference between an issue of fact and an issue of law. Have you, had a, have you looked up the California Constitution to verify that there's not proof that it's regarding, would be sub, your client would be subject to the, that there's proof that it's regarding California residents? No, I'm going based on what my conversation I'm having with you right now. I'm asking you for the proof to support your claim. You're the one who put a claim through the United States mail, ostensibly in response to Mr. You know, to Greg's uh, uh, request for evidence. You're the one making the claim. So you're, I'm asking you what evidence you have to support your claim, and you can't give me anything. You've actually admitted several times that for specific facts, you can't, you can't give that to me at this time, that I'd have to give it to you in writing in order for you to respond. Well, I mean, you can look up the Constitution Article 4, Section 1, and also that's, that would be a relevant section, and also Article Article 8, Section 26 of the California Constitution that covers, you know, your inquiries. Yeah, no, that, that, that is a... You're, so are you saying that the evidence that the Constitution applies to him is the Constitution itself? That, I'm not quite following what you're asking. You're telling me... Because you're saying Section Article 4, Section 1 is... Is, a, is, is evidence that the Constitution applies to him because he's physically in California. So what I'm asking you to do is clarify. Are you saying that the Constitution is evidence of itself that it applies to Greg just because he's physically in California? Well, based, on, based on my research, the, he would be subject to the California Constitution and the Revenue and Taxation Code as being... California resident, so uh, our jurisdiction minute. would lie. Would he would fall within our jurisdiction to uh, for personal income tax matters? Wouldn't being a resident presuppose that the that the that the the Constitution code already apply to him? Because being a resident means you've been in, you know it, it, it's a legal issue, correct? Uh, I cannot you know comment on that. Oh, so are you qualified to to determine that he is? subject to the law, and a resident of California? So based on our information, he, that would indicate that he is a California resident with California sourced income. Okay, so, you, so you're, you're qualified to say that, but you're not qualified to answer the other question. Well, regarding is, the legality of the document, no, I cannot. Well, are you qualified? Well, okay, because at this particular point, th th all right, is it your position that the Constitution is evidence of itself or evidence that proving that it applies to Greg just because he's physically in California? I'm not, I'm not understanding your question, sir. What information you're trying to... Uh to understand or receive. Okay. Well, let's take. Let's take. Isn't being a resident? Isn't that a legal determination based on your code? 
I, I cannot comment on that. I, okay, you can't comment on that, but you can you can make an affirmative statement that he is a resident based on your law. You, you see, you see why you're. I, I can understand why you're getting so confused because you're make you're contradicting yourself over and over and over. Again. Well, I'm just not completely understanding your your statements or you know your your questions or arguments. I don't understand well, fully what you're trying to divulge and understand. Okay, you're saying that he's a resident, but doesn't that already pre doesn't that presuppose that your claim that the laws apply to him is already true? You know, it's true. You're, you're presuming the laws apply to him when you call him a resident, correct? Correct. Okay. So since that, so... He would be subject to the California Re- Revenue and Taxation Code, being a California resident, and based on income that has been earned and, okay. and taxed. So that goes back to my original point. What f- specific facts, though, do you have to prove that just because he's physically in California that, you're, that your constitution and code apply to him? Well, the facts would be in the California Constitution itself regarding the article. There of the you go. Let me write it down. In the Constitution itself. But where, all right. So, are there any facts independent of the Constitution that would prove it applies to Greg just because he's physically in California? Let's see here. I'm showing the uh, Revenue and Taxation Code 17014 does define a resident. Doesn't that presuppose that the code applies to him in the first place? Yes. So you're assuming it applies to him. So, again, that's not an answer well, that, to the question. That, de- that defines the resident. If defines the, the California resident. Yeah. So that, did, did he meet that definition? No. What, does the code apply to does the constitution apply to him in the first place though first don't is doesn't logic dictate that the code has to apply to him in the first place to then be able to then uh, reference what it says what evidence is there the yeah. constitution applies to him then uh, i mean i don't have i'm not don't know how to answer specifically the specific evidence that you're looking for let me write that down you don't have the answer or specific so at this time, but again, it's something that you want to submit that we can definitely research and respond to. Be more than happy to. Okay, but we've determined at this point already that you don't have any specific evidence to support your argument or your claim that the Constitution applies to him just because he's physically in California. And I believe the proof that you're looking for would lie in both uh, articles, but you know, you, you, specifically you, but, citing those right now, I don't have that information available. You don't have the facts. Okay, you don't have. The, so you can't affirmatively state right now at this point that your constitution laws apply to him and that the franchise tax board has any jurisdiction at all right now. Are you indicating that they do not? 
uh, based on your based on your admissions that at this time you don't have the specific evidence. I wrote it down. You don't have the specific facts to support your claim. I, I, I'm just trying to get well, to fact, clarify what you're saying. That he resides in California. He's domiciled uh, in California. Uh, wait. We've already determined that you're assuming the laws apply to him. We're just trying to determine. We're just trying to before we go to the next step. We're just trying to clarify, the, you know, the situation right now. At this particular time, you don't have any specific facts or evidence to support your argument that the Constitution applies to Greg because he's fi- just because he's physically in California and that the Franchise Tax Board has any jurisdic- has has any jurisdiction over him. Well, the evidence would be in his would be how the income is reported and is, is being a California address and resident. Okay, that you, but you're assuming that the Constitution Code apply to him so that you can label him a resident, correct? We've already covered that. So now that you're throwing in the, the, the income, is it your position that the income proves your Constitution applies to him? And, um, I don't know if that's a specific link or not. You don't know. Okay, so we're right back. Now, I know, I know you may not want to admit this, but we've already got your admissions on the record now. I just want, you to, be cl- I just want to be clear before we go to the next step. At this particular, uh, just yes or no, at this point in time, during this phone call in real time, you do not have any supporting facts or evidence to support your claim that the Constitution and Code apply to Greg and that the Franchise Tax Board has any jurisdiction over him at all. Well, the evidence with him being a, being a California resident. That's Again. your opinion. We've already established it's your opinion, and you're assuming that your constitutional laws apply. You even use the word assume. So making an assumption, you have to agree. I didn't use, a, I didn't use the word assume. Yeah, you did. I didn't assume he's a resident. Uh, you're, assuming, he's he's here. you're assuming that your constitutional laws apply to him, though, and that's exactly what you said. I'm making a record of this phone call, too. Are you recording this phone call? Just like you are. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm going to have to ask you to stop recording. If not, I will have to terminate the call. Why? You're recording on your end. And for you're not going to give purposes. Uh, are you going to give me a copy? You can say for whatever purposes you want. Are you going to give us a true copy of this recording? Again, Mark, I will have to state that if you do not stop recording the phone call, I will have to terminate the call. Okay, you'll do. Uh, all right.